um, I'm going to share with y'all. I was at home, and I, well, I came up here, and I was talking to Pastor about something that happened at work that kind of made me, you know, rise from ri- some righteous indignation that happened at work. And I was talking to Miss Pauline, and, you know, she Holy Ghost comforted me. At least get your stuff right, and you won't have to do this. I said, okay, cool, that's fine. So I go in there, I'm like, yeah, Pastor. He was like, oh, can you um, preach on Wednesday? I said, yeah, and I'm continuing on talking about what I'm talking about. So I get in the car, I was like, wait. <laughs> he said, preach on woo- well? I'll go preach, but him? I said, okay, okay. Cause I, so I went home, and I, that thing, whew, I was like, Lord, um, what do you tell these people? Like, with apostle, what you? so he told me to encourage y'all. That's all. He said, encourage them. And the way I want to do it is, is I just listen for the Lord. That's all I do. I just listen for the Lord. I, you know, I try to put the three points in a poem, that thing don't work for me. <laughs> whew. So what I do is I listen for the Lord to what he's saying to each person individually or to the house all together. And he gave me some words I want to share with you. But I just want you to stand with me and worship the Lord with me. Get myself stirred up. No nervousness. No nothing. Father, we worship you. We magnify you, God. We thank you that you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We worship you. We magnify you, God. You're Jehovah Jireh. You're Jehovah Nisi, God. You're the Lord, our banner, Father, and we worship you, God. We thank you that in this house you are glorified, that in this house you are magnified, God, for you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God, and we worship you. We welcome your spirit here. We welcome your ministry, God. Flow through me, Lord God, to bless your people. We welcome your word in the name of Jesus. We call forth a blessing to this place in Jesus name. God, you reign on high God. So have your way in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can have a seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can have your seat. Some are going, that's, that's what I do. Praise the Lord. I'm excited about the, about our mother and father of this house who teach us the word so diligently. I'm so excited. I thank God for all my brothers and sisters. All y'all. My parents, hey, y'all, how y'all doing? Praise the Lord. My parents are here. Praise the Lord. Amen. But what I just want to tell God is this is a great time. Grandma hear me say it all the time. I'm excited. I, every time I pray, I'm excited. But for real, I am excited. Because this is a time of overflow. This is a time of breakthrough. This is a time of breakout. This is a time of, of going beyond demographics. This is a time of soaring. Above everything that the devil has ever tried to do to the body of Christ, this is the time that we're going to just step out. This is a time we've already decided in this house, I know that we've made up our minds that we're going to serve and magnify God, that we're going to do everything that he's called us to do, and there's nothing going to stop us, right? I want to go, and, and so when I was praying, I was like, okay, Lord, what you, what you want to do? And so he told me, he said, at least I want you to look at the Bible differently. And I say, well, it's the word of God. I honor the word of God. I believe everything that's in it from Genesis to Revelation. If it says bonded leather, I believe that too, Amen. And so he said, <laughs> but he said, I want you to look at the Bible differently. And I said, okay, how do you want me to look at the Bible? And the first thing he said, he said, I made sure that the Bible was completed before you started. And I said, what, what, huh? He said, I made sure that the Bible was completed before you started. I said, okay. He said, now, if somebody brought you the book of Eli, you look at them like they're crazy because the Bible's already done. The word is already finished. He said, this Bible was made for you. That's the name of the message. It's you. It's you. He said, this generation, he said, I have favored this generation. I have favored this time. He is on this time, this culmination time. The Bible was made. It was already completed before we started. So then he said, he said, the word of God was already tried, tested, and proven that it works. The name of Jesus already was tried, tested, and proven that it'll work. So you don't have to worry about your situation. It's going to work. All right? The name of Jesus works. It was already tried, already tested, already proven. He started, he said, it was tried with Abraham. When he told him to send his son up to go up to the altar, he tried Abraham with the word of God. It was tested with Jesus. They did everything to break him, and it was proven when he raised him from the dead. And disciples went out doing miracles, so it was tried, t- tried tested, and proven. So therefore, he said, so you have no excuse. You are without excuse. I said, oh, okay. He said, you're without excuse. So when you go out, when you come and stand before me, when this whole thing is all over, and you, I want to know that you do everything that I called you to do because you had no excuse. The word was already tried, it was already tested, and it was already proven that it would work, right? It was already proven that it can make you rich. It made Job exceedingly rich, right? It made him rich. It was already proven that it was powerful. It raised Jesus Christ from the dead, 
right? That's right. So it was already proven when, when everyone preaches about Jesus. Everyone preaches about Jesus. Everyone, the disciples and everyone else preaches about Jesus. But he told me, he said, at least it didn't stop there. And I said, okay. He said, I sent the disciples for your sake. He said, the Bible was done for your sake. The next thing he said, I'm going to be real short. The next thing he said, he said, everything that has been done has been done in this, for this time and for this season. Everything that's been done is for this time and for this season. Every time that Paul preached the word, he preached it for this time and for this season. Right? When he preached that, that he, man, I'm excited, y'all. Because the word of God has already been tried, tested, and proven. It works. Paul worked it. Jesus worked it. It works. And this time he said, when he told me that, I said, okay, Lord, if it was already done before I started, that means that it, it has to work. That's my faith. It works. Right? It just works. Right? So I said, Lord, so when I go out and I lay hands on the sick, all you have to do is look back on the Bible for when it worked for them. That's how he wants you to look at the Bible, that everything he already said, it works. And that's it, right? The next thing he said, I have put, a, 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 I have put the inability to settle on the inside of you. For this house. That's what he said personally for Souls Harvest. When you start doing and experiencing things, he said, he not, the next thing he said, he said, things are becoming uncomfortable quickly. Right? So you just moved into the house, so the next thing you know, you're uncomfortable. You just moved there. So the next thing you know, you're like, ooh, pray. You don't dance your way into the house. Don't song your way. Don't pray your way. Don't confess your way into the house, and it's already too small. He's making it. He's giving this house because the mantle that rests on this house, the mantle that rests on you and I, things become uncomfortable quickly because we have to speed this thing up, is what he's saying. He said that for so long, he's favored this generation because he understood that this will be the generation that will bring Jesus Christ back. All he's doing is waiting for us to present him with the kingdoms. That's all he's waiting for. He's not, uh, yes, the gospel has to be preached in all the four corners of the earth. That's true. But when you take over the kingdoms, there's no, there, everywhere there is a kingdom. So when we take over the kingdom, the gospel will be preached in all the four corners of the earth. So all he's waiting for us is to understand that it's already been tried, tested, and proven. Okay, the next thing he said, I was looking, he said, go, go, go ahead and go to Hebrews 4.11. Amen. Hebrews 4.11. I talk fast and I get excited, so I'm going to slow down. <laughs> because you have to understand, this thing, people are crying out for rain. They're crying out for help. They're crying out for our help. I work in a facility where I look at people face to face every single day, and you can see the cry in their eyes. And I want to be able to solve the problem. He's given us answers. He's given us a way to do it, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. I decided I don't care who's looking. I don't care what they say. God's my provider anyway. So when, deep, when God says cast it out, I'm going to cast it out. When he said lay the hands, I'm going to lay the hands. When he said do that, that's what we're going to do because we've been already called out to do that thing. Right? We can't be afraid of what the world says. This is the policy. No, we got to be like Peter. When he said, should I do what you say? Or should I obey God? When the Holy Ghost on the inside of me is telling me he's, he's ready to be free. Should I obey policy or should I go ahead and do what the Holy Ghost told me to do? Because he said, he told me a long time ago, me and Pastor was talking after prayer. It was years ago. And I said, Pastor, the Lord told me that religion is not going to work. And I said, he said, yeah, that's right. He said, religion can't stand up against what the devil is about to bring. That's what he was ministering to me. That's what the pastor said to me. And I said, okay. And I went in my car and I began to think about that thing. He said, religion has like, it's false, really. It really, that's why we have to take over the mountain of religion. It's false. That's what, it seems like I'm all over the place, but it's going to all come together at the end. Amen. So religion, we can say, uh, he, by, by I'm stripes, I'm healed. You can do that in religion. You can do that with your mouth, but it really takes for your heart to be there. Right? You can say that I have power. I, I got the power. You can say that, but it really takes for you to really have the power. And what he's saying, he's tired of religion. He's tired, if you listen to it, he's tired of the understanding church. He's tired of just people saying with their mouths but not doing with their hands. Right? It's our time to not only say with our mouth but do with our hands. Because this is the time where people need to be set free. People need to be delivered. I know the ministry that I flow in is deliverance. I already know that. God told me, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to do that thing. But what I'm saying, we all have what God has placed on the inside of us. But we are so, we, we're sitting. We're just waiting. We're waiting. And what we're waiting for, we have no idea. If you really think about it, really, think about it. What you waiting for? Everybody think. Jesus, raised from, Jesus rose from the dead already. 
The Bible said power will come on me when the Holy Ghost comes. Show to a rabbi. Oh, there go the Holy Ghost. So really, what you waiting for? The Bible says seed time and harvest will not cease. So really, if you think about it, what are you waiting for? Right? Think about that. What, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for to heal the sick? What are we waiting for to build the school? But there's fear that's stopping us. And there's ourselves, but, we, but we're out of that because we're in a new us. Right? This is the new me. Amen. I'm, for, I'm not afraid to preach and declare the word of God. This is the new me. But what we're doing is we're just sitting and we're waiting. And people are dying when we're sitting and we're waiting. Right? Because I remember a long time ago I sat with the man of God when I first got saved. And he said, at least I wouldn't doubt there's millions of souls attached to you. I said, oh, millions? I mean, I was in the thousands. But okay. Millions, millions of work. And I said, okay, I believe that. But so I'm here to tell you the same thing he told me. There are millions of souls waiting for you to manifest their miracle. There are millions of souls waiting for us to stop waiting and to get moving. So I'm going to encourage you tonight to stop waiting and get moving. Because if I can take this like a one-on-one counseling session, if I can tell you there's nothing that we're waiting for, there's no reason that we're still waiting. God is waiting for us. He said this Bible was made so that you can look through and identify, okay, he did it there, he'll do it for me. Because the Bible says he's no respecter of persons, right? So when you look through the Bible, that's how we're looking at the Bible now. This whole thing was made about you. This whole thing, he's, he, had, he had them all pinned down so because he knew that this season and this time would come. That's what he told me. That was yesterday he told me that. He said this whole Bible was made about you. I got excited because I felt real, real special then. You know, I'm already special. But I felt real special because the whole Bible was made for me, right? And then he said that the, then the inability to settle. Now I understand why cars get old real fast, right? Because we're trying to go somewhere. But then go to Hebrews 4. We're going to go back there. Amen. Hebrews 4 verse 11. This is what we need to do right now, today. He's been on me about, fa- about fasting and praying because the Bible says this kind of faith only comes out by prayer and fasting. So the kind of faith that we're going to need to open the blind eyes is only going to come out by prayer and fasting, right? This scripture says, let us, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. And the King James says, let us labor to enter into that rest, right? That word labor means to exert, one version means to exert ourselves. Exert means to put oneself to strenuous, vigorous action or effort. So what he's saying is, so it, is exceeding Grace Christian Center, let us labor to enter into that rest. Turn the TV off. You hear the man of God say that all the time. Turn the TV off. Let's labor. Let's fast and pray. Let's get on our faces so that when you get up off that ground, power is just going to come out. Right? If it happened in here and this is made about us, what does God expect for us to be doing? What is God, when we stand before him, what is he going to expect from me? He said, okay, at least I gave you the word that was made for you, but we know that this isn't it. So what is, when we stand before him, he said, okay, I gave you the book. I gave you the manual. I gave you everything that you would need to do what I called you to do. What happened? I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear what happened. It's quiet in here. Y'all don't want to hear that either. Right. Right. We don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear, well, at least you dropped the ball. What, what happened? Like I told you, labor, and it's only for... The laboring doesn't take that long. I'm, I've never given birth yet. I've never given birth. But I know that labor doesn't take that. It, it could take 22 hours and it seems like forever. I understand that. But when you push through and you enter, you have that baby forever. Okay? When you labor, when you push through and that baby comes out, that baby is yours forever. So I'm telling you, if you take this season to labor, to enter into that rest, when you break forth, when you break out of fear, doubt, and unbelief, that faith is yours forever. That miracle will be yours forever. That ability to flow in new levels is yours forever. So I've decided that I'm going to labor to enter into that rest because I don't want nothing to stop me. Because I know that when you reach a certain kind of flow, you don't come back down. Right? I don't want to be swollen. Sometimes I have victory. Sometimes I have defeat. Sometimes I'm excited. I want to be like a tree. When a tree grows, it never comes back down to the same size. It just keeps growing. Right? So I've decided in this house, and I want you to decide with me. I'm encouraging you to decide. Let's buckle down and let's labor to enter into a new level of rest. Right? Because when, I, when we push that thing out, when the ministry comes out, when, now the exceeding grace is here, it, it's not going anywhere. We've labored to 15 years to enter into this rest, this new level of glory, this new level of anointing, right? So I'm encouraging you to do that, right? The next scripture will be 1 Corinthians. When we finish laboring, this is what's going to happen. These are familiar scriptures to all of us, but let's read them like they're new. 
Let's, let's look at the Bible like, all oh, this was made for me. Every page, every snapshot that happened was made for me, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Actually, can we go back to Hebrews 4, 11 and the Amplified? I want to see the Amplified. That's so good. Hebrews 4, 11 and the Amplified. Therefore, let us be zealous and exert ourselves and strive diligently to enter that rest of God. Just start right there. The rest of God. What does the rest of God look like? When he speak, do you ever think that something won't move? When, when God say, let there be light, does light have a choice? That's the kind of rest we're trying to go into. That's why we're laboring. The labor that we have to do, the Bible says be, that we're violent, right? The violent take it by force. So the labor we're doing is fasting. The labor that we're doing is continually hearing and hearing by the word of God. Because he told me, he said, at least I promise you, I was, I was sitting there. He said, at least if you give me two years, you'll be 28. I said, okay. He said, well, what, what you want to be doing in 28? So I started naming stuff. He said, I got more than that. I said, okay. He said, give me two years. I said, well, Lord, he said, now you would have gave me two years ago. Two years ago when I asked you, you would have been 26. <laughs> he said, two years before that, you would have been 24. Right. You can ask Barbara. I've been, I'm telling you. The Lord been telling me at least going to this place of just labor where you're just going to seek my face, shut everything off. And I was like, okay, Lord, two days. Okay, Lord, six months. And I'm back doing my old stuff, but not no more. Amen. Not no more. Yeah. Not no more. Because we have things that we need to do. I know that Joyce, jo, the Joseph anointing is on this house. So our families are waiting for us to manifest. Right? There's no, there's no, me and Pastor were talking about it, me, Pastor, and Grandma, that there's one person, there's no huge families in this house. You're like one person out of your family in this house. That's not a coincidence. That the Joseph anointing, I'm the only one in my family that's in this house. Right? Kirkland, you're the only one in your family besides you and your wife that's in this house. That's a Joseph anointing that is on our lives. That our family is waiting for us just like the family is waiting. They didn't even know they're waiting for Joseph. So my brothers don't even know they're waiting for me. Right? They don't even know it. They don't even know. My brothers don't know they're waiting for me. My aunties, my grandmother, she doesn't know she's waiting for me, but I know it. Because of the Joseph anointing that's on this house. And they can't wait anymore. The system, their system is failing too fast. So they can't wait anymore. They, they can't. It's, they're done waiting. If I keep playing, I'm talking about me. I'm like Pastor Kim do. I'm just talking about how the Lord talked to me, and y'all just grab hold where, you know, where y'all fit. Amen. So if I keep going in and out of this laboring time, they got to keep waiting, and the system keeps failing because the devil's not going to stop. My grandmother gets Social Security. I just took her yesterday. She's driving around, cashing her check, paying the bills. And I'm like, Lord, I can't. This can't wait because when that fail, I need to be sending the check in every, every month. Three times that every month because that's going to fail, right? But if I keep jumping in and out of this laboring time, it's never going to work because the, the, the Lord will not go against what's already in the word. So you have to, we have to labor to enter into that rest. We wonder why, oh, man, I, I just I, I can't really stay with it. Like this spirit of doubt, there's a spirit of doubt hovering. I'm like, Lord, it's like doubt just keep coming. Like I see it happen and still don't hardly believe it. I'll be in the car and still be like, Lord, you sure this is my car? Like, this, this for me? Y'all quiet, but I'm serious. This, this is what was happening because I wasn't properly laboring to enter into that rest. So I'll be watching stuff, and I'll be like, Lord, you sure? Now, when God said, let there be light, because we're laboring to enter into the rest of God, when he said, let there be light, do you think he ever second-guessed that, that that light was his? That that happened because he said it? Right? That, that, this, that, that car manifests for me because I prayed. Because I sought the fire, I sold the seed. And it manifests, can't no one take it from me. Debt free, right? Okay. All right. To know and experience it for ourselves. So we want to know and experience the rest of God for ourselves. I don't want to hear everybody else experiencing but us. I don't want to do that. I do not want to do that. I, not in this house. Not the word that we're experiencing because the word that's being preached, I don't know about you, but it's up here for me. It's way, it's way. Right? You got to throw a pick at it and, and, and climb your way up. The word that's being preached. But I dare not let this word go all over the world. They experienced it. And I was right here. And nothing happened. No. No. They're not finna move from Georgia and get a house. And I'm still in this apartment. No. Because I was here. Because we, we got people moving from all over to come here for this word. Right? 
They're not going to come in their business prospering in one year, and I've been here for five, and ain't nothing happened because I refuse to labor. Right? So I'm encouraging you to labor. We're going to go on on. Amen. All right. The next one, after we finish laboring, this is what's going to happen. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. It says, but as is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor, had, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So when you start to labor, when you start to really press in to God, that's what laboring really is, it's pressing in. That's what that really is. So when you really start to press in and start to labor, you'll see things. That's when, when Pastor Dow, that wasn't foreign to me when he said it. He said, start giving praise for what, what I show you. That's what happens in labor. You get visions of that baby coming out. You, that, that ultrasound starts happening. You're giving God praise for that thing that's not yet born yet because you spent time with him. He showed you things through dreams and visions and all this stuff, right? Apostles not the only ones supposed to be having dreams and visions. I know they're laboring. I know they're pressing in. I know that. But we're supposed to be having dreams and visions and doing great things, right? Okay. In the next part, Hebrews 11. This goes back to the point when I said the Bible was made for us. And then I'll be done. I'm going to sit and receive me some word from my big brother. Praise the Lord. Okay. Hebrews 11, verse 39. And it says, in all these things, having obta- all the, in all these, having obtained, they're talking about, you know, this is the Hebrews, this is the book of faith. You know, it talks about Enoch and everybody. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they, sh- that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Can we get that in the Amplified, please? This Bible was made for you. Say it was made for me. It was made for me. It was made for me. It says, in all these things, though they won divine approval by means of their faith, did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised. Because God had us in mind. And had something better and greater in view for us. So in everything, I don't care how much you search this word. You go through and look at Solomon and all his glory. You go through and look at Paul. and I mean, Paul is the man. Like, all his epistles, all that stuff. He waited, he showed, he's got something better for us. So how, how should the books that you write bless people's lives? If the books that Paul wrote is blessing our lives, these are books that Paul wrote. That's what the Pauline epistles are. It's something that he sat down with God and got a revelation from the Holy Ghost and wrote this Bible and wrote those books. So when you write a book, how much more should that bless somebody's life? If he's for us, he got something better for us in view. Right? How much more should that book bless people? Now, I'm not saying over the Bible. Of course not. I'm not saying that. But how much more power should come off those pages when you write the book? If he's got something, in, something better for us, how much better should your life and the glory on your life look than Solomon? If he's got something better for us. So all he's asking us to do as a family, I know this house, there is no word being preached, TV, radio, all that, like that's being preached in this house. This, this, this is it, y'all. We are it for this region. I know it to be true. I won't say I've been in church all my life. I've been in church some of my life, not all my life, right? But I've never seen anything like what I see going on in here. I have never seen it. And we are, the, we are piercing through things so that other ministries can come behind us. That's why we have such a humble man of God and such a humble woman of God who are willing to teach and to train. That's why we become the ministry that we become today because of the anointing that's on our lives. God's going to take them because they're laboring, but we got to go too. This is for real. We have to go too. So it's time for us to make the decision that I'm not going to be left behind. And I was so blessed when I heard Prophet Smith. He said, in this next move, none will be left behind. In this next movement, none will be left behind. So I speak that again over your life and release prophetic authorization. In this next movement, none will be left behind. None will be. Now that means that some people, y'all, you know, y'all not doing right. I don't know where y'all going to be. But in this house, none will be left behind. So you might get mad and leave, but here, no one will be left behind. Because that's what the, I believe the word of the prophet, okay? And the last scripture I want to look at is what we're going for. I think it's First Thessalonians. This wasn't on my news. 
first or second? Okay, First Thessalonians 5, 23. And this is my last scripture. This one's been on my heart a lot, a lot, a lot. And when I began to look up the words, I understood why. Because of the decision I was making in myself. The decision I was making that, yes, I'm 26, but age is not going to stop me. Right? right? That's not going to stop me. Yes, I have the hit. That's not going to stop me. Because I'm excited. And I'm ready. And I'm willing. Right? He told me, to, I forgot to read the first point. He told me to encourage you. He said, encourage those who are already said, yes, he can. I know he will, and it's already done. Amen. So that's who I'm speaking to tonight. Amen. Who already made a decision that, yes, he can. I know he will, and it's already done. Amen. That's it. Say that with me. Say, yes, he can. Yes, he can. I know he will. Know he will. It's, already it's already done. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. I know he will. Know he will. It's, already it's already done. That that should make you shout a little bit. Yes, he can. I know he will. It's already done. Right? Okay, this last one. It's one of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible because it's proof that we can live a sinless life. It's proof. Verse 23 says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That word preserved means to be kept guarded, right? And that word blameless means to be in direct alignment. So may your soul, your spirit, and your body be in direct alignment at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I shared this with some of my friends already, but I'm going to share it with you all too. When Jesus Christ comes back, he's expecting nothing less than our soul, body, and spirit to be in direct alignment for what he said we should be when he came. Right? There's a specific spot, a specific place you should be when the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ happens. When the sky rolls back like a scroll, you should be somewhere doing something. There is no exception. There is no excuse. And then he ministered to me. He said, when you become in direct alignment like that, when you become in your soul, your mind, and your spirit is in direct alignment, manifestation is instant. It happens easily. When everything believes it, it just happens. When your soul, because your spirit is already in alignment with God. You're just trying to get your soul and your body to catch up. So that's why faith got to come by hearing. That's why we got to hear more of the word of God. Because we got to get our souls, our, our souls to catch up. Right? Or your body will go where your soul go. Your body, you can't leave this thing. You can, please don't leave it at home and come because I don't know what I'm going to do. Right? <laughs> Bring your body with you. But anyway, so he wants all of it to be lined up in direct alignment. Perfectly aligned is what he told me. I expect you to be perfectly aligned because sometimes we get this mindset that God is going to be all right. You know, when he come, I'm just going to be, whoo. Yes, he's going to be happy to see you, but he's going to have some questions. Right? I know that he's, gonna, he's had some questions. I know people who've died before, he had some questions because they didn't get where they, told, where they should be. They weren't perfectly aligned. But his expectation, he said, will I find faith in the earth? When he finds faith in the earth, that's because you've lined yourself up perfectly with the word of God. So I want to encourage you tonight at my last comment, and I'm going to pray, is that we abide in his word. That's how we labor, is by abiding. Go to John 15. This is how we labor. John 15 says, I am the true vine, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. He cuts away, they, they, they bear much fruit, that it may bear much fruit. You are already cleansed because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me that's what he's saying to the body of christ today unless you get with this movement that's about to happen unless you get with me in my name there's nothing going to happen for you okay that's what he's saying to churches all over the world if they're just hawking their ears he's saying unless you that fruit that little stuff that you've been doing is not gonna work anymore the flesh will profit nothing right okay it says where was i we're going to go to verse 5. And I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me he can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And, that, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you, this is it right here. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Right? So when you abide in him, when everything's lined up, when you ask him, it's already done. 
because you've decided that, yes, he can. I know he will, and it's already done. So labor with me. Labor. Labor with me. If you see me doing something, I'm laboring right now. I'm in the Word. I'm focusing. I'm not working. I'm, at, I'm glad I'm graduating. Praise the Lord. It's over. I'm in the Word, right? So that's my encouragement to you because we have to do this. We have to do this. This house right here, this is it, y'all. This is it. For real. If I can, Apostle may tell me say that, but this is it. Exceeding Grace Christian Center is going to pave the way for churches for, for centuries to come. If we're here that long, for centuries to come. But it's going to start with us. We're the disciples of this ministry right now. We are the 12. It's a lot of y'all, but we are the 12. We are the 12, and when Jesus commanded them, he said, go out. The apostles are going to start sending us out. We're going to start, you know, you go here, you do this. But he's going to, you know, he's going to, you know, assess to see if the word is abiding you and you're abiding in the word, right? But it's, we're it. I don't know how many times I got to say that, but we're it, y'all. This city is not going to change without this house. That's what God just said to me. The city is not going to change without this house. So they're waiting for us. Mayor, pre- whoever, the city is not going to change w- without this house. And then on Sunday I was sitting there. He said, at least what I do in this house and then in this city is going to shape the nation. I said, whoa. Because, I mean, you know, I've been thinking regional. Praise the Lord. I'm regional. But he was saying what I do is going to echo to the nations and from this house, from this spot. Because if you look at anything that's happened large, it happened from somewhere. Anything that happened big and took over and got huge, it happened at one spot. This is the one spot that God has set himself. The Bible says he even said he prophesied over this house that he will cause his face to shine upon this city. Where do you think he's going to be shining through? From right in here, from right through us, from those who are abiding in this word. We know our man of God preaches the truth. We know that he's led by the spirit of God. So we have to abide in that word. If you're saying, well, I don't know where to start, replay a message. Look up every scripture that you heard in that message and start right there. And abide in that word. Get, connect with somebody, do something. Labor to enter into that rest. Amen? Amen. Amen.